So, welcome to the third session and this session is little bit on some legal aspects of consumer behavior and uh, we call it dimensions of consumerism. So, in this module we will cover primarily four major aspects. One is the concept of consumerism, what does it mean? Secondly is the issues related to consumerism, when we should be concerned and when we should not be. Third is the threats of child consumerism and its implication particularly in India and Consumer Protection Act in 1986. So, to begin with we start defining the concept of consumerism. So, Kotler in 1972 he has defined consumerism as a social movement seeking to augment the rights and powers of the buyers in relation to sellers. So, for any deceptive practice of the sellers, uh, the buyers have the right to assert themselves and exert their opinions. Mainz in 1990 has gone a little bit forward and he has said that consumerism is the voicing of the customer's discontent and the furtherance of corrective actions. So, which means when the customers uh, complained about different products because maybe they have got some defective products or they have not got any service which was promised to them and what kind of corrective actions are possible uh, for against this complaints. So, the third one is McElhenney again in 1990 he has defined consumerism as citizens movement which will make broad reaching social ecological political demands on suppliers of goods and services. From W 2 and W 3 countries angle again W 2 is the developing countries and W 3 is the underdeveloped countries. So, W 2 as I have uh, said in the last module here just those who have missed that I will just in short tell that W 1 are the countries that is the developed countries like UK, several European countries. We talk about W 2 countries, W 2 countries are the developing countries uh, which are upcoming basically like India, China and this kind of countries. W 3 are underdeveloped countries like several sub Saharan African countries then Haiti, Bangladesh and uh, this kind of countries mainly. So, here from those angle of developing and developed countries consumerism has been defined as the efforts made either by the customer himself or by the government or independent organization to protect the consumer from the unscrupulous practices of businesses in their quest for profit. This has been defined by ONA in the year 1979. So, what are the issues pertaining to consumerism? When we should be concerned of? The first one is how the products and wealth which we are buying or which we are getting, how those has been created. The recent controversy, if you remember, the recent controversy is related to Maggi noodles. And in Maggi noodles, the basic uh, problem was the containment of monosodium glutamate in the um, as an ingredient and that was not stated as an ingredient, but it was Maggi packets it was proved that the Maggi packets are containing uh, the uh, monosodium glutamate which is which may cause uh, carcinoma. So, this kind of problems could be there where you have not stated what is exactly the ingredient of your product, but that product might be harmful. Then uh, is there any uh, negative impact of the process of the production on the environment, society and individual. For example, overuse of pesticides in the agricultural farms or in the agricultural produce may uh, actually create a disaster for the society. Even sometimes the farm, uh, the, the uh, factory waste and all these things are disposed in the river water, the ponds and the land and it has been just uh, as landfills. So, that also creates some kind of hazards in the customers uh, health. I am not exactly customers health, but we will say that the health of the society in general those who are not even our customers. So, this kind of problems may occur and any times our form of consumption can also threat the society and the individuals. So, our form of consumption means suppose when we are not using a proper 
uh, fuel for the autos and all and when we are using some contaminated oil for uh, and that is creating uh, carbon monoxide gas in the environment that is also a kind of uh, creating hazards for the, the way we are consuming the fuel that is also creating problem for the society. So, that is also a consideration when we talk about the customers protection or the society's protection over and over, over use of anything and in the products. For example, as are we purchasing the food or any other thing for our necessity or simply for our lavishness. If you remember that even in the marriage cards, uh, sometimes we see that it is printed that uh, the, the invitations has been made as per the rule, as per the rationing rules or as per the uh, government rule, which means there is certain restrictions of the number of invitees also. Because there is a necessity to call people as an evidence of the marriage or to celebrate the marriage, but of course, it should not be going too far, too, like it should not be resulting in lavishness, spoil of food, wastage of food because food again is a scarce product. So, this kind of consciousness also needs to be there because otherwise uh, this is again like you are using overusing the or um, wrongly using the products of the society and depriving others uh, to get it in the proper price. And then we also need to know that to what extent our consumption basket is influenced by advertising strategy of the marketers. So, especially when we talk about the consumerism in the developing countries, particularly since we are in India, a developing country, our main concern is about the consumerism in the developing countries. So, there was a study of Thoroughly in 1990, uh, which he has made on the attitudes towards the consumerism in four developing countries, Singapore, India, Nigeria and Kenya. This study is very worth mentioning. Because this study scans the present extent of consumerism in these countries and judges them against the underlying dimensions of marketing strategies. These countries symbolize two different continents. As we can see that India is from Asia and then again Nigeria, Kenya if you see that is from Africa. And the study provides an interesting facet of evaluating the customer behavior or the pattern of consumerism from two different countries perspective. So, according to this study, the consumerism in developing countries arises out of mainly three different reasons. Actually, in developed countries, it arises particularly because of overly promoting the products or um, mainly over, overly promoting the products or more wealth in the hand of the customer. So, that is why they try to consume more, but the developing countries, the perspective is little different. Developing countries, the perspective is lack of quality control of locally manufactured products poor logistic services and the vendors, those who are selling the counterfeit products, they are uh, actually not very careful about the uh, adulterated products, uh, the quality of the adulterated products and what could be the implication on the customers. Many times we are seeing the cloning of the products like Nescafe, the some cups where it is written nice cafe, which, which is not Nescafe, but it is, it is sounding very similar to Nescafe. So, this is a kind of cloning which is happening which keeps gives the customer the understanding that it might be Nescafe, but which it is not. So, this is the way also the customer to some extent uh, they, they fail to understand what uh, the brand is exactly whether it is a actual brand or it is a cloned brand. So, therefore, consumerism in most of the W2 and W3 countries is precisely uh, subject to government policy and legislation where government has to actively control this kind of things. In particular, sometimes even you know there are counterfeit and adulterated products in the local trends. Uh, many times it is uh, shown that you know people are say they are saying that the hawkers they are saying that we are selling scratch bites. Three or four uh, the similar looking products and those are sold in rupees 10 and sold, but these are not at all scratch bites, these are actually the counterfeit products and the customers are actually deceived because they, they may not be aware about you know the packaging and all this and they are basically deceived or they might feel that it is almost a similar product, but this product with scratch bite may not be of similar quality. So, therefore, this requires a legislative intervention or a policy intervention from the government side. So, that is why we say that you know in the most of the uh, W2 and W3 countries, this consumerism or consumers protection is a subject of government policy and legislation. 
In particular, it is the proficient enactment of the government policy does not only the policies which will help, but also the enactment of the policy which can help. Because protecting the customer's passive right is also, you know, uh, the policy is there. You know, in several public places, you should not be consuming you, uh, cigarettes and all these things. But we find that it is still being done. So therefore, the, it is not only the rules, but it is also the enactment of the rules, how you uh, implement the rules, what kind of public support system do you have to implement the rules is more important. Now, and also how the customers are um, responsive to this kind of things. If there is any counterfeit brands, if there is an adulterated brands, if we are knowing this, how many times we are really raising complaints, raising our voices against this. If not, then this practice is going to continue. So, you know, it is not only the legislative, legislative part or the policy aspect, but also how this policy is enacted, how the customers are proactive or assertive to actually protect their own rights. So, but the marketers on the other hand, what they can do, if there is an upsurge of consumerism, too much of purchase of goods, uh, aggressive marketing promotes the product um, by promoting the products by aggressive marketing and uh, that increases the purchase uh, of the brand. So, th in those cases what uh, the mar marketers can do is actually they can find out different latent needs and wants and accordingly they, they are, they can promote the products, of course, in a legal way. So, explicitly the corporate needs to identify those groups of people who really need use and purchase their products directly. Consumer oriented marketing also calls for checking the pricing strategies by the companies and finding out what kind of pricing would be relevant and appropriate to the general customers. It also involves the process of scrutinizing the effectiveness of the existing distribution channel, whether I am going for a legally uh, perfect distribution channel or whether I am practicing any kind of illegal distribution or I am doing some kind of gray marketing, I am doing some kind of uh, black marketing of the products, whether or unnecessarily I am storing the product and in indulging black marketing, whether I am doing those kind of practices or not. So, those things has to be uh, of utter utmost care by the marketers. Now, in this era, of customer is the king, all distribution strategies are actually pinpointed towards the lone goal of selling multiple assortments from multiple touch points and intensify the business. But at the same time, we should take care that we are not making too tall claims about our products, we are not making false, claim, false claims about our products. The another very important aspect to be discussed in terms of consumerism is the concept of child consumerism, which is presumed to be a veritable threat to the society. Child consumer uh, like in a study of a child psychiatrist like Dr. S. M. Monohari, he has said that the parents these days are using television as an electronic babysitter and they bribe them uh, by toys, chips in, in ads to get children to behave properly, eat and sometimes for eating, sometimes cooperating them in several activities. So, children get into a rut of wanting things all the time. The enduring consequence of advertising on small children is for all to see, says Manohari. And he says that they learn what they see and advertising, advertisements rather also encourage children to be fickle in their loyalties. They do not develop a long lasting value system and they mature also in a very skewed pattern. Another most shocking consequence which we can see it sometimes particularly for the poor families because of over, overly media exposure, over, adver, overly advertising of the products, children start you know the, even for the poor families they demand different kind of brands, but which their parents cannot afford to buy them. And the shocking consequence is that sometimes uh, in the newspaper reports come up that they even uh, in the, they have got indulged in several criminal activities or they have committed suicide also. So, these are some of the shocking uh, things which are coming up and there should be the, so there should be some policy implication how to control this kind of things. Now, this situation is not very different in developed and developing countries, but what is difference, different is that uh, the, the way the things are tackled in developed and developing countries. In developed world, they have already woke up to this occasion, particularly US, they have from since 1970s, they have woke up uh, on this issue. UK has also controlled certain TV commercials, especially those which are targeted to the children. Uh, Sweden particularly, they have said that targeting uh, children below 12 years by any commercial is being prohibited. 
So, these kind of actions they are coming up with uh, in our country actually uh, so far such kind of things we have such provisions were not there, but of course, we have to think whether we should allow this type of consumerism to shape the destiny of the young children. Because even we have seen that a, a, a recent survey by Sunovet India uh, carried out by Cartoon Network, actually it was carried out by Cartoon Network in collaboration with Sunovet India and it has shown that you know around um, children actually spend around 291 crores on as their pocket money. And uh, in 14 cities covering around uh, this, this uh, so they have covered this survey which is around more than 400 ch 4000 children I am sorry across the uh, country they have covered who are watching cartoon network and it was being shown that even for 84 percent families the children are taking parts in the uh, purchase of say uh, big purchases like say television sets, cars, uh, mobile phones they are, op they are placing their opinions for that and they are exerting their pester power towards certain brands also. So, we should think of what kind of destiny we are going to shape for our children though and whether we are too early they are, they are getting mature too early or not. So, one provision to protect customers from a marketers deception is the customers protection act 19 so rather consumer protection act in 1986. So, act number 68 of consumer protection act 1986 is a signpost in the history of socio-economic legislation of the country. The key objective of this latest law was to endow the customers with better safety and security by offering an simple prompt and economical remedy to the aggrieved customer. So, uh, how to file complaint against this consumer uh, for consumers protection? So, a complaint either by handwritten or in typed format on a plain paper uh, can be filed by a consumer, a registered consumer organization, central or state government, one or more consumers identified by common concern. So, one customer can also complain a group of customers or through any NGO or some consumer forum also they can complain. So, th this kind of complaints does not require any kind of stamp or court fee. Now, on which grounds you can complain? It is not that <coughs> for all grounds you can really um, complain. It is mainly because of unfair trade practices like I have already said that you are counterfeiting the brands. So, or making uh, false claims about the brands, you know, some restrictive trade practice adopted by the trader or anything of this kind you are doing uh, for defective goods sold to the customers. Uh, service which was being promised has not been delivered so there excess price charged by the traders, unlawful uh, sales of the goods which is hazardous to life like we can uh, say that gutka which has already been banned. So, whether that is being sold or not. So, those kind of things. Now, there are three kind of forums where the customers can complain. First one is the district forum. So, where for the claims up to rupees 20 lakhs the customer can complain. State commission here the complaints could be launched for up 20 lakhs to 1 crore damage. So, uh, this kind of uh, uh, the if, if, you, if, you are, if you are claiming any damage claim you can claim up to rupees 20 from rupees 20 lakhs to rupees 1 crore in state commission. And when it is your claim is more than 1 crore, you should go for national commission. But here one thing we should take care, it is not that the customer in each and every case they can file a complaint and that would be entertained, uh, the marketer's interest should also be protected. So, that is why whenever a complaint has been launched and when they are seeking for any relief, the customer should cite whatever complaint they are making, they should cite, uh, cite it with proper evidences. For example, if I am saying that the fairness scheme uh, which has promoted that it will be uh, it, it is good and it has created some harm to my skin, then I should come up with a proper medical report, my purchase, sleep, uh, my proper medical report and any other evidence possible in support of my uh, complaint. Then it has to be submitted in quarter duplicate in district forum, state commission and also to the opposite parties. And in case of multiple parties, additional copies are to be filed simultaneously. 
and usually these complaints are to be resolved within 90 days from the filing of the complaint. Uh, but sometimes you know some sample testing may be required. For example, I am saying that any fairness claims um, which are said that in 14 days or in I know in one month I will be very fair, uh, but while using it I have some skin say skin problem or some consequences. So, that time may be uh, it is required to test the uh, folder that is the container or the product itself. So, in that case the sample testing may be for example, Maggie. Maggie when there was any complaint against it. So, that time there was obviously the lab testing of Maggie uh, whether there is really monosodium glutamate in the packets or not. It is not only about the case of Maggie earlier it has happened with uh, soft drinks also like Coca Cola. It has also happened with uh, um, some kind of packaging issues about Cadbury's. So, this kind of problems has occurred about several brands they have come out of uh, this kind of complaints by coming up with said good packaging, uh, good better product design or maybe sometimes like Maggie they have actually now passed the quality control in several labs and it is back in the market with several other ingredients. So, in those kind of cases anyway when a sample test is required the marketer is given the time given uh, to solve this is usually 150 days. So, therefore, uh, we can say in a nutshell that uh, consumer courts can grant relief to the petitioner on these grounds A. They can, so if we just see uh, just from which ground they were uh, asking for complaints, they were asking for unfair trade practice, defective goods, deficiency of service, excess price or unlawful sales which is hazardous. So, the remedy is also in that line, remedy you can ask for uh, repair of the defective goods. Sometimes you may ask for replacement of defective goods if it is not possible to repair, then refund of the price paid for the defective goods or service. For example, Agarwal packers they uh, while transporting if they really think that if you can really prove that during the transport some items has been spoiled or broken or something they, uh, they also insure the products and accordingly they pay the uh, they pay some um, uh, refund amount which has been agreed upon refund amount. Uh, between the customer and uh, the company itself as a uh, loss claim or the damage claim they pay. So, that is there then is uh, any service deficiency if it is there you have to remove it and you have to provide the proper service and in case any extra money has been charged that has to be given back to the customers. So, in short we uh, this is the concept of consumerism we have started here with the concept what means consumerism. Second, we have covered what are the issues which we should be concerned about the consumerism. Then the aspect of child consumerism and how different countries are handling it and then we have talked about the provisions in the customer protection act uh, which can help the market uh, actually the customers to resolve their grievances against some company. So, uh, this much about the aspects of consumerism and our third module. So, thank you so much and we will come back with our next module very soon.